let's look at how to do integrals, or the area under the curve, this time by hand. So these ones seem a little bit harder. So I thought of this one, <laughs> calculus fields we need to grade. Oh, because it gets so shredded. All right, let's look at graphs. They can have negative parts, which can mean they can be below the x-axis. This can be a little bit dangerous. You have to be a little bit careful for these. So let's just say I was trying to find the area here. This area right here will be some positive you know, area. But this area right here, if I just calculated the area from you know, 1 to 2 right here, this area right here would be negative. This is important because it, it all depends on what you're looking for. I mean, sometimes you do care that it's negative, fine. I'm just saying integrals, they can actually be positive or negative. But if we want to know the area, like what's this area and what's this area, we need to consider only the positive parts. So what do I mean by that? Well, I would maybe take like, you know, the area of this f of x here, f of x dx, from let's say 0 to 1. I would just consider that. And then I would add to that the area under the curve from 1 to 2, except this part here, because it's negative, maybe I want to take the positive part. So I would take the absolute value. That's what this is, right? Just means any part that's negative, you just make it positive. So if I got like negative 5, I would make this positive 5. So this is sort of the, the idea behind it. It all depends on what you're looking for. So uh, we have this formula in your formula booklet about the area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis. And it goes like this. Okay, so it's just a, which is for the area, right? That stands for the area. And it's just equal to the integral from a to b. So that's like where you start, where you finish. Of, and here they just put in the absolute value of y. So that's how you can find the area, right? Uh, just make a nicer y here. There you go, like this. Basically just says, take the absolute value of it, and there you go. So in case you want the area, we probably mean the positive area. So if it is negative, make sure you change it to positive. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. I mean, one is to just, just take the absolute value of the function, then just do the area, like with the integral. It depends. Or maybe if you don't think to do that, then you might get a positive or negative value. If you want the area, you could split it up and take the absolute value of the areas, like I just showed you here. So you can say, oh, I'll take that piece, I'll take this piece, and I'll add them separately. That's one way to do it. Um, it all depends on what you want. For example, in kinematics, where we're doing some physics-y stuff, if we want the distance traveled, well, then we do take the area, so we want it to always be positive. But if we say, what's the displacement, then we just take the raw integral, so we, we let it be positive or negative. So in other words, if this here represented like a, a displacement here or something like that. Sorry, this was the velocity. And then the displacement then would be... Um, this area under the curve. So if this is a graph of velocity, it turns out the displacement would be the area under the curve. If I want to know the displacement, well, look, here I'm maybe going away from you know where I started here, and now I'm coming back home, so I'm a little bit closer to where I started. So it's all going to depend on what's going on here. So just be a little bit careful with what you need. But for right now, we're just going to be considering areas, so we're just going to consider the positive parts. So. Uh, if you want to do an integral by hand, a definite integral by hand, it's not on your formula booklet, but it's a good idea to have an uh, to know what to do here. So if you do want to do this thing by hand, well, first you have to, I'll write a capital F here. We write it like this. This is how we typically write it, something like this. This is something that's maybe worth memorizing. Um, or just use it a few times, you'll understand what it does. So what is this? This here is the antiderivative. So what it means is that once you've found out what to do, do your antiderivative, and you evaluate it. You evaluate your antiderivative at b first, then you subtract from that the value of the antiderivative at a. I'll show you what I mean, because I think it, it'll help to show you in context. So let me just show you this example. We've done this before, but let me show you how to do this one by hand now. So I want the area between f of x and the x-axis from x equals 0 to 1 of this function right here. Now we've seen it before, this is just x squared, right? This is just, let me just try to sketch it here real quick. x squared is actually a nice one, we've seen it before, right? We've got x here, we've got y. I'll graph the, maybe just the positive part of it like this right here, and I want to go from 0 to 1. So somewhere between 0 and 1, I want to know what is this, what is this area here? So from 0 to 1, i got to make sure I know that. So 0 here, and here it's 1. So I want to know this area here. 
well, what do I do? I'm going to write it down. So I'll say, all right, the integral from 0 to 1, that means start at 0, stop at 1, of x squared dx, you should always write your full integral that you're going to do, is going to be equal to, now, what's the antiderivative here? Remember the rule for uh, integrals, we do, we grow power. So this one here is an x squared, so we should make it x to the power of 3, all that over 3. That's how we do antiderivatives or integrals, right? We always increase the exponent, and then we divide by the same number. Now normally we'd say a plus c, but we don't need the plus c, we have a definite integral. So what do I do? Well, the convention normally is we write a little line like this, and we say 0 to 1. This is how we tend to do it. We basically say, do this thing from you know, 0 to 1. What it really means is I'm going to do this whole thing evaluated at 1. So watch, I'll say 1 cubed over 3. Then I'm going to subtract from that. That's this whole rule here, see? I just did f of b here. So the antiderivative at b. Now do your subtract from it, antiderivative at a. So watch, I'm going to do this. This is my antiderivative here, this x cubed over 3. So then I'm going to say uh, 0 cubed. Oops, I just wrote a bad 3 here. 0 cubed over 3. Do you understand what I did here? I did my antiderivative at b minus antiderivative at a. Well, this happens to cancel out, so that's kind of nice. So boom, that's gone. So I just end up with, let's see here, I just end up with 1 cubed, which is just 1 over 3. And I'm done. So I've done this by hand. And remember, you could always check uh, the answer on your calculator, but do you see we're actually, we're maybe just as fast as a calculator. I'm not sure. It depends how fast you are. Let me just say I want to do the graph of it right here, and I'll do the analyze, I'd say give me the integral from x equals 0, enter 1, enter. Do you notice that's 0.333 repeating? Look, I just did it. That's not bad. We can do some more. Let's do another example. Uh, by the way, this is really clever, although it's kind of mean. Look, calculus can be funny if you understand it. You have integral from a to a of f of x, friends. Why is this funny? Well... What is the integral? Let's just say I did this one right here. Um, I would do capital F of A minus capital F of A. That would be 0. See, because if I do a definite integral from A to A, well, I evaluate it at A and I subtract from it the same thing, I'm, of course, going to get 0. So you have 0 friends. That's a, it's a bit mean, but <laughs> it's clever. So let's see here, we have this function now. We have to be sure though that this thing is always positive. If we're not allowed a calculator, it helps to maybe just have an idea here. So let's see, at x equals two, two squared is four, four minus two is two, it's still positive, so that's good. How about at three, is it still positive? Three squared is nine, nine minus three is six, so it's, it's always gonna be positive, at least from two to three. It won't always be positive, watch, just to show you. I can do I'm supposed to not do it with a graphing calculator, but I'm just sh trying to show you the graph just to convince you that although part of it may not be, look like it goes below here, but from 2 to 3, so from here to here, it's positive. So there's some parts that are negative, but we've just phrased it to where you only have the positive parts. So you don't have to worry about the absolute value stuff. It's going to work. Okay, so let's do the area under the curve. So the area is going to be the integral from 2 to 3, of this equation, so x squared minus x, all that dx. It just tells me I'm doing the x integral. Okay, let's go ahead and do it then. So, what is the antiderivative of this thing? Well, x squared becomes x, let's see, I have to add 1 to it, so it's x cubed over 3, minus, now this is an x to the 1 right now, so it becomes x to the 2 over 2. But I evaluate this from 2 to 3. So what does that really mean that I do? Well, that means I'm going to do this whole thing at 3. I'm going to do this whole thing at 2, and I'll subtract them. So I'm going to use a big square bracket, maybe. I'm going to say, all right, so 3 cubed over 3 uh, minus 3 squared over 2. I'm just evaluating this thing at 3. Then I subtract from that this whole thing evaluated at 2. So it's going to be 2 cubed over 3 minus 2 squared over 2. So although it's a little bit ugly, we can do it. So we keep going, 3 cubed, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so I have 27 over 3. Minus, what's 3 squared? That's 9 over 2. So I have this mess right here. Minus, let's see here, what's 2 cubed? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so it's 8 over 3. 
all that minus, let's see, 2 squared, which is 4 over 2. There's a couple ways of doing it. I mean, I could just try to simplify everything. I could put them all over the same denominator. There's a lot of ways of doing it, but let's just see. 27 divided by 3 is actually just 9. So it's 9 minus 9 halves. All that right there is, let's see here, minus 8 over 3. Oops, I didn't make a very nice 3 here, or an 8. So minus 8 over 3. But watch out, it's minus minus 4 over 2. Now 4 over 2 is just 2. So this is minus minus 2, which becomes a plus 2. See that? So I'll just take care of my 9 and my 2. That's 11. So I have 11 minus 9 over 2 minus 8 over 3. Puh, okay. Well, what can I do with this? Well, I'll probably have to make it all over... Uh, God, I don't know, I guess 6, I suppose, because uh, I have to make a common denominator here. So I'll make them all over 6. That's about the easiest thing to do here. I'll make them all over 6. So I did a really bad job with my minuses, didn't I? So this is here, minus something over 6, minus something over 6. So this right here is like a over 1 right now. So 1 times 6 gets me 6. So 11 times 6 is 66. 2 times what gives me 6? Uh, 3. So 9 times 3 is 27. All right. Uh, I keep going, right? Um, 3 times what gives me 6? 3 times 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. So now I have 66 minus 27 minus 16. Let's see what that's going to be. 23. Is that 23? 23 over 6. I don't think I can reduce this. No, I think I'm done. So I'm going to say then that's my answer then. This is my fully reduced answer. Now, of course, if I was allowed a calculator, I could estimate it. Let's see what it is. So just to show you how you could just check with a calculator if you needed to. Let's go from uh, 2 to 3. The answer is 3.83, let's just say. So I'll just say that right here. I'll say equals approximately 3.83. Let's see if that really is the case. What is 23 over 6? I need a new calculator here. Plus 23 divided by 6. Give me the approximate answer. Phew, it worked. So 3.83. So to see if we could get the exact value without even needing the calculator. So this is pretty powerful stuff. All right, let's do another one. Let's find the area between the graph of, this is the last one I think we'll do. So do you remember what the graph of square root of x looks like? I do. I hope you do. You don't have to necessarily, but it's a good idea to have an idea what that graph looks like. Square root of x does this. It goes kind of like that. So if I want the integral from 1 to 4, well, that means I'll draw them here. I'll just draw where 1 is. Maybe 1 is here. Maybe this is 4. And let's say, so we're going to be doing this area from 1 to 4. We're going to attempt to find this area right here. All right, so how do we do this? Well, again, we can write the integral. The integral is going to be, so the area is the integral from 1 to 4. Now, it's always positive, so we don't have to worry. Of, now, I'm going to rewrite this to be more calculus friendly because this may look nice, but it's not good for calculus. I'd rather it's 1 half because I can deal with that. So I'll say it's x to the 1 half dx. Now, how do I go ahead and do this? Well, the area will be, I have to do this integral, so it's x to the power of 1 half plus 1. Now remember, 1 half plus 1, let's see, it's going to be 1 half plus 2 halves, because that's what this is, which gives me 3 halves. So I have to say, oops, I wrote a little bit fast here. So that means I can say that this is x to the power of 3 halves, all that over 3 halves. And all that is uh, from 1 to 4. Let's maybe try to fix this a little bit, because it's hard to do this by hand. So let me see if I can uh, go ahead and make it a little bit easier. Let's see. Uh, when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So that'll be 2 over 3. And then so here I can rewrite it as, uh, maybe I'll say uh, x to the 1 half, all that to the power of 3. That might be easier to look at, of course, from 1 to 4. The reason I'll do this is because x to the 1 half is a square root. So I can say this is like 2 times the square root of x and all that to the power of 3. That might be easier to look at. All that over 3. I'll do that from 1 to 4. Let's see if this will work. So I'll go ahead and uh, see if this works for me. So a equals, 
Let's see, now I'll do this whole thing at 4. So 2 times the square root of 4, and I'll take that whole thing and cube it. All that over 3, and I'll do that minus, because remember I always got to subtract from that, this thing evaluated at 1. So square root of 1, all that cubed, all that, and by the way it's this one cubed, over 3. Okay, let's keep going then. What is square root of 4? It's 2. 2 cubed, though, is 8. And 8 times 2 is 16, so I'll say 16 over 3. Minus, let's see now, square root of 1 is just 1. 1 cubed is still 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 over 3. So I get 16 over 3 minus 2 over 3 is equal to 14 over 3. And I'm done. I don't think this can reduce, can it? It divides by 7 and 2. That one doesn't. I think I'm done. So do you see... You just got to be careful with your algebra. It gets a little bit ugly here. But, you know, we sort of worked it out. Let's see if this is going to work on our calculator. Just to double check, because I always like to show that. I do a new graph. And I'll do the graph of square root of x. And I'll do it. So I'll say menu, give me the area under the curve, so integral, from x equals 1 to x equals 4. Do you notice it says 4.67? Let me see here if that was the case. So I'll say equals approximately 4.67. I hope that's the case. Let's see if it is. What is? What was I supposed to do here? What was it? It was 14 over 3. 14 divided by 3. Give me the approximate. Yay, it's 4.67. So to see how we can do some really deep stuff by hand, we don't need our calculator for it. That's actually pretty great. So hopefully now you no longer feel like this kid right here being shredded. But oh, yeah, there we go. We've learned how to do the integral by hand. There we go.